Hey folks, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at how to detect radiation. So let's get started. We're going to look at four different types of radiation detectors, which are the Geiger Muller tube, film badge, spark counter, and scintillation counter. So the first one we're going to look at is the Geiger Muller tube, but it says here that the ionizing effect of radiation is used in radiation detectors. So we've already seen that alpha, beta and gamma radiation are three types of ionizing radiation and we can use this property of them to detect radiation. So a Geiger Muller tube, first of all, it says here that it consists of two electrodes, a central rod and outer casing, between which a voltage is applied. So if we look at the picture here, first of all, here's our counter and our Geiger Muller tube. So this tube here is what we're going to be looking at in a bit more detail. So this this is our sort of inside view of this tube here. So inside the tube we've said there are two electrodes. So there's our central electrode and there's our outer casing here. So the outer casing has a negative charge and the central electrode has a positive charge. And this difference in charge is really important for how this thing works. So it then says that the tube is filled with a low pressure gas. So because we've got a positive charge and a negative charge here, this creates something called an electric field, which in turn is going to create a potential difference or a voltage. So this means that a voltage is applied between the two plates. The tube is filled with a low pressure gas. So in this tube here, we've got a low pressure gas and that means we're going to have atoms of the gas. It then says that when ionizing radiations, alpha, beta or gamma radiation enters the tube via the thin Mika window, it ionizes the gas creating positive and negative ions. So there's the thin Mika window here, and we're saying that when an alpha particle, a beta particle, or a gamma ray enters the thin Mika window and enters this spacing in the tube, it's going to ionize the atoms of the gas. And this creates the positive and negative ions which you can see there. And what happens next is important. So it says that the positive ions are attracted to the negatively charged casing, whilst the negative ions are attracted to the positively charged central rod. This creates an electrical current for a short time. So what we're saying is that the negative ions there are going to be attracted to the positively charged central rod and that's because positive is attracting negative and also the negative of the outer casing is repelling the negative charges of the ions away. And then we've got the opposite case for the positive ions. So the positive ions are going to be repelled away from the positively charged central rod and attracted towards the negatively charged outer casing because remember positive and negative charges attract. So that's going to create a flow of ions or a flow of charges and a flow of charges is just the same as an electrical current. So this means that an electrical current will flow for a very short time. The current produces a voltage pulse which can be counted by the counter. So there was our counter there connected to the Geiger Muller tube. And so this voltage that is produced for a short time is counted by the counter and this corresponds to one count. And this will add one to the counter. One count corresponds to one ionizing radiation entering the Geiger Muller tube. So basically we're saying that when an alpha particle, a beta particle or a gamma ray enters the thin Mika window and causes ionization to take place, then when the current is produced for a short time and therefore the voltage is produced, that adds one to the counter. Next we have the film badge. It says here that people who work with radioactive materials often monitor the radiation dose they are exposed to using a film badge. A film badge contains several windows and different materials of varying thickness inside. Photographic film is placed inside the film badge holder and sealed with a paper covering. So if we look down here, we can see our film badge. You get a wee paper clip so that you can put it onto your uniform if you're working with radiation in any way. And you've got little windows here and photographic film. And it then says when ionizing radiation hits the photographic film, it blackens or fogs the film, which is clear to begin with. So there's your clear photographic film but when radiation hits it, it's going to blacken or fog the film. The materials inside the holder absorb different types of radiation by different amounts. So there's our materials of varying thickness, and by having different materials like different thicknesses of aluminium and lead and so on, then that is going to absorb different amounts of radiation, and then you can check the film regularly to determine how much and what kind of radiation the worker has been exposed to. So let's say you had a few millimetres of aluminium in there, but well, we know that that's going to absorb beta radiation and alpha radiation. So if you had a blackened or fogged photographic film at the area behind that aluminium, then that would tell you you had been exposed to lots of gamma radiation. And that's just one example of how this thing would work. 
Next we have the spark counter, and this consists of a metal gauze mounted just above a thin wire. So if we look at the spark counter here, so you've got the apparatus here, so if we look here you'll see the thin wire and the metal gauze above it. And if you zoom in on that you would see this. So you've got the metal gauze and then the thin wire here. It then says that a high voltage is applied between these two parts. So let's say we've got a potential difference of 5000 volts. So we've got 5000 volts here and 0 volts here. Then when an alpha source is brought close to the gauze, it ionises the air causing sparks to be produced between the gauze and the wire. So the reason this would be a detector of alpha radiation is because remember alpha radiation is the most ionising. So if an alpha source is brought close to the gauze, then it would cause ionisation of the air particles there and that's going to cause little sparks to occur between the wire and the gauze because they're at a different potential difference. Lastly we have the scintillation counter and this one is maybe not as often discussed at National 5 level but it says that it consists of a scintillator which is a fluorescent material which produces flashes of light when ionising radiation hits it. A photomultiplier tube short into PMT converts the light to an electrical signal and electronics process this signal. So there's a picture of what this would look like but you don't really need to know the ins and outs of it. So let's say we had an instant alpha particle or beta particle on our scintillator or fluorescent material here, then this could produce light which would travel through to the photomultiplier tube and that photomultiplier tube is going to convert the light to an electrical signal and that's going to multiply the signal many times over which can then output an electronic signal and process that signal to show that you've detected radiation. Just to summarise our four types of radiation detectors then, so the two important ones are the geiger muller tube and film badge. They are ones you would really need to know for the exam. The other two are sort of there for interest. So the geiger muller tube consists of a gas, central rod and outer casing with a voltage applied between them. Ionising radiation ionises the gas creating an electrical current and voltage pulse which can be counted. The film badge contains photographic film and materials of different thickness. The film blackens or fogs when ionising radiation hits it. These are worn by radiation workers to monitor radiation exposure. The spark counter consists of a metal gauze and thin wire with a high voltage applied between them. Alpha sources ionise the air creating sparks between the wire and gauze. And lastly, the scintillation counter consists of a scintillator, photomultiplier tube and electronics. Ionising radiation instant on the scintillator produces flashes of light which can be counted. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.